Japanese American civil rights activist Yuri Kochiyama, who was born in San Pedro, California, was a member of a family that was among the 120,000 Japanese Americans on the West Coast who were rounded up in a wave of anti Japanese hysteria that followed the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Here she recalls her experiences in the detention camps. I was red, white, and blue when I was growing up. I taught Sunday school and was very, very American, but I was also very provincial. We were just kids rooting for our high school. I was 19 at the time of the evacuation. I had just finished junior college. I was working, looking for a job and didn't realize how different the school world was from the work world. In the school world, I never felt racism. But when you got into the work world, it was very difficult. This was 1941, just before the war. I finally did get a job at a department store. For us back then, it was a big thing because I don't think they had ever hired an Asian in a department store before. I tried because I saw a Mexican friend who got a job there. Everything changed for me on the day Pearl Harbor was bombed. On that very day, December 7th, the FBI came and took my father. He had just come home from the hospital the day before. For several days, we didn't know where they had taken him. Then we had found out that he was taken to the federal prison at Terminal Island. Overnight, things changed for us. Most Japanese Americans had to give up their jobs, whatever they did, and were told they had to leave. The edict for 9066, President Roosevelt's edict for evacuation, was in February 1942. We were moved to a detention center that April. We were sent to an, uh, an assembly center in Arcadia, California in April. It was the largest assembly center in the West Coast, having nearly 20,000 people. There were some smaller centers with about 600 people along the West Coast, Washington, Oregon, California. There were many, many assembly centers, but ours was the largest. Most of the assembly centers were either fairgrounds or racetracks, so many of us lived in stables. They said we could take only what we could carry. I was so, I was so red, white, and blue. I couldn't believe this was happening to us. America would never do a thing like this to us. This was the greatest country in the world. So I thought, this is only gonna be for a short while, maybe a few weeks or something, and they'll let us go back. At the beginning, no one realized how long this would go on. I didn't feel anger that much because I thought maybe this was the way we could show our love for our country. And we should not make too much fuss or noise. We should abide by what they asked of us. I'm a totally different person now than I was back then. I was naive about so many things. And the more I think about it, the more I realize how little you learn about American history. <laughs> it's just what they want you to know. Mm -hmm. We always called the camps relocation centers while we were there. Now we feel it is apropos to call them concentration camps. It is not the same as the concentration camps of Europe. We feel they were death camps. Concentration camps were a concentration of people placed in an area and disempowered and disenfranchised. So it is apropos to call what I was in a concentration camp. Historically, Americans have always been, put, been putting people behind walls. First, there were the American Indians who were put on reservations, Africans in slavery on their lives on plantations, Chicanos doing migratory work in the kind of camps they lived in, and even to the Chinese when they worked on the railroad camps, where they were almost isolated, dispossessed people, disempowered. And I feel those are the things we should fight against so they won't happen again. This whole period of what the Japanese went through is important. If we can see the connections of how often this happens in history, we can stem the tide of these things happening again by speaking out against them.